Big play slay, your first question here on NFL Daily. Make sure that you're using hashtag NFL or you can super chat. Best tight end not named Travis Kelsey or George Kittle. Zach Ertz. I'm still going to go Ertz. I know, I know he's aging, but There's I'm a lot of go people that'll say Dallas Goddard's better than uh, Zach Ertz. I've seen that one trending on the internet. Don't so. know who says that. They are insane people and should not I'll, have uh, I'll say Darren Wall. You can at least put in the conversation. Austin Hooper, I think, deserves mm -hmm. to be in the conversation. But I will still put Zach Ertz as the third best tight end in the National Football League. Marcus Nichols. Nicholas, get a picture and I'll learn how to talk. Where do you rank Chris Carson? Chris Carson is one of the most underrated running backs okay. in the league. Back to back over a thousand yard rushing season. However, he's hurt. He's always hurt. And he went to a weird college name. And Oklahoma he fumbles State. a lot. I Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Yeah, Oklahoma State. I, I think that Carson is probably in that top 20 range. I, I think that there's a bit of a tear break hanging out around the top 10 to the top 20-ish, and you can slot Carson in somewhere there where he's not a guy I want to pay big money to, but if I'm starting him, I feel fine. I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I got a good back. I probably still want a 1B to pair with him, but I feel good about my committee if, 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 if it's a committee and he's my 1A. So somewhere in that, I don't know, 16, 15, somewhere like that. Ish, yeah, somewhere in there. Let's go to Southside Wrestling, and for the people who did super chat, we will get to them. Just be patient. Is it possible that the Rams could finish bottom of their division? Yes, very, very possible. Yeah, I mean, you have the Niners and Seahawks. I think two of the best teams in the NFC. Then you have the Cardinals, a team on the rise. Yep. And then you've got the Rams, who I think will be better, but I think they're a bit on the decline. So. I think three and four finish close to each other in the NFC West, but if they're finishing close, then yeah, there's a real chance the Rams finish last. All right, how about this South Side Wrestling? Who's the best team in Cali? All right, who's the best team in California? If you think it's the 49ers type SF, if you think it's the Chargers type LAC, and if you think it's the Rams type LAR, I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's video. So for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, you might get with an ad break. While the ad is playing, I want you to scroll on down and let us know who the best team in California is. Jeff Rogers, what's up, dude? Name the top five offensive lines in the National Football League. So, for me, you got to throw the Saints in there. Saints are one for me. Uh, the Colts have got to be in Good there. Good choice. The Raiders have got to be in there. Yep. The Dallas Cowboys I'll throw in there. I think you got to include the Ravens and Packers. I, I actually I would consider dropping the Cowboys out, out of that list. They certainly, I think, have one of the best top three, okay. like three players. But Looney is nowhere near as good as Frederick, and the left guard is you know, serviceable. I think I'd put Green Bay ahead of them. Okay. I think the Ravens and Cowboys are kind of battling for that fifth spot. I'll, I'll put the, the, or the, the Ravens and Cowboys for that fifth spot. Raiders at four for me. Cool. A really good offensive line, though. Big play slay. You got another one. Best receiver in the NFL. When I think of the best receivers for me, there's there's Michael Thomas, there's DeAndre Hopkins. I'm still gonna throw Julio Jones in there. When I, from a talent standpoint alone, I do still believe that it's Julio Jones. I will take Julio Jones. You can make the argument for Michael Thomas, 149 catches, but I'll still go with Julio Jones. What do you think, Tom? I'll go Julio and then Nuke and then Michael Thomas. The, those are my top three guys. You know. I know a lot of wide receivers in general, Tom. They've been getting the bag. And if y'all need to get the bag as well, hey. A got, different type of bag. <laughs> we got NFL backpacks out right now. So I wear a backpack every single day to work. I know Tom does too. For those of you that may be going back to school or if you're a dad, if you're a mom, grandparents, and you need to get your grandkids or son or daughter a backpack, we got you covered. All 32 NFL teams, different sizes, different colors as well. All you got to do is go to chatsports.com slash Backpack and oh wait, there's also player backpacks as well. This oh, Saquon there's one. a lot going on, but it's Saquon Barkley, baby. There's uh there is a lot, a Perfect lot. Perfect for your on. kids, guys. Imagine Adam Sandler wearing that. Back to school. You've been Back you've been humming school. that like the entire show. You and Dylan, Back I think Dylan did it at one point too. So my daddy no think I a fool. All right, get a backpack. Jacksports.com slash backpack. All right, what up, Joseph? So in what week does Jonathan Taylor? Take the starting role from Marlon Mack. It, I would say week one. I is it is it does he take the starting role? I think he or is does the he just like they just kind of do a timeshare thing? Because I think they're gonna do a timeshare thing. At least early on this year. And 
I think they'll ride the hot hand. So I think one week, you know, you're going to see Mac be the starter, maybe week one. Maybe week four, it's Jonathan Taylor. He gets the workload. Then, you know, week seven, it's back to Mac. Week nine, it's back to Taylor. So I anticipate a committee role. I do think by the end of the year, you know, Taylor is the quote-unquote starter getting the, the lead role for Indianapolis. Next super chat from Chris Ayers, and I believe that we're all caught up on the super chats. So, Ayers, put your hands in the air, Ayers. Uh, Mitch, do you miss You're Khalil Mack? Nerd. No, I, I do not miss Khalil Mack on the Raiders. I You're think, lying. I, I don't. I, it was so you much You don't drama. miss the impact pass rusher. It was one offseason of drama. Oh, it was a lot of drama. Now, do I wish him the best of luck? Sure, I will always wish him the best of luck. And you, I think You miss Khalil Mack. You don't miss Antonio Brown. That's how it should be. <laughs> Sure. I mean, anytime that you can get a player. But the one reason why I don't miss Mac, and I, I'm serious, I think the Raiders have done a very, very good job in the draft. And I think when you look at the Khalil Mack trade, I think the Raiders are winning it right now. I think it is. I think it is fair to say you prefer the draft picks, but you can still miss Khalil Mack too. <laughs> He's one of the best players in the NFL. That's fair. Danther Man, one twenty-three. Dan the Man. It's Danther Man. I, there's uh, no R in there. Oh really? Oh. No. Dan the Man. Okay. What I think Mitch needs glasses. Yeah, that's a fact. What quarterback will end up with the most touchdowns this season? Are we including rushing? Even if you include rushing, I'm still going to go with Mahomes. You're a coward. You're right, but you're a coward. I, I think I, I think it is Mahomes. I I think I think he, he's I don't probably he's, not going to get 50. So I don't know if he's – he might get 45. <laughs> but he might get 45. <laughs> he might exactly. get 45. I mean, Lamar had 36 Ooh. through the air and another seven on the ground. I see his touchdown passes coming down a little bit just because sure. the, the volume's not quite there. And the, that Chiefs offense to me is going to be the number one offense, so I'm going to put my money on Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, not a dark horse <laughs> NFL MVP candidate, but if you all want to throw in your votes right now who you think could be a dark horse, please go ahead and get your votes in here right now. I know we're going to get a lot of Kyler Murrays. I've seen some Kirk Cousins in there. I guess I'm going to say Cam Newton could be thrown in there as well. Can can I throw in a running back, Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley maybe? Any running back is by definition a dark horse MVP candidate, so I am on board with that. I like Matt Stafford. Ooh, Matty. It's a super dark, dark, or super deep dark horse, but it fits. <laughs> I mean, Chris says Russell Wilson. He never got a vote, so maybe he does count. I mean, he's never, he's never gotten a vote. So, yeah, Chris, you know what? I think you're right. Salad Jr. Pronounced this Salad. Will, salad, okay, my bad. Fancy. This will be the last question, so if you do want to get your question featured real quick, you will need a super chat. How will the NFL draft be impacted by the conference being postponed? Look, first off, I don't think you're getting spring football. I think spring football is is an unattainable good for college football. Twofold. One, you're going to have all the good players opt out yep. because the draft is going to be too close. What are you going to expect? These top-end draft picks or even guys that are probably going to get drafted to show up, go through a season, and then immediately go into OTAs and mini camp and rookie camp and play a year? That's unrealistic. Yep. And then for the other colleges, if you play spring football, even if you reduce the, reduce the, the number of games, it means you got to reduce the 2021 season. All of a sudden, you're trying to fit two seasons in like eight months. Yeah. You can't claim that this is about player safety and then try and do that, which we know is not safe for the players. That's why there's gaps in between the season. This, I don't think it's realistic. So as, as for the draft and the impact and all of that, there's a significant one. And if the Big Ten packs are the only ones not playing, that's going to really hurt those guys' draft stock, and I feel really bad for those kids. 